Bonjour, bon matin. Welcome to St. John the Baptist Catholic Church, St. John, North Dakota, the city at the end of the rainbow. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time and invite you to join me now to pray the angels. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our entrance and to fun. Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Eternal Father, we offer you the most precious blood of your divine Son, Jesus, in union with all the Masses celebrated throughout the world today. For all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners of the universal church, those in our own homes and within our families, amen. This holy sacrifice of the Mass is being offered for the intentions of John and Ronnie Verrica. And let us begin the sacrifice in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant Elikim, son of Hilakiah, 
I will clothe him with your robe, and gird him with your sash, and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot, to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him, and through him, and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may you be in my heart and in my lips, and I proclaim your gospel worthy of God. I beg you, God, and my sister, Lord, make haste to help me. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of another world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. The words of the Gospel wash away all of our sins. <clears throat> oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom of the knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable all his ways. For from him through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is from today's second reading. God knows what he's doing. Even if his reasoning is beyond our comprehension or understanding. And today's gospel, my brothers and sisters, this reading from the gospel gives us a very clear example of the inscrutable judgment of God. In today's Gospel, Jesus gives the keys of the kingdom to Kaipha, to Peter. And as we know, the name Peter comes from the Greek word Petra, meaning rock. Jesus named Simon, Peter, the rock. The rock upon which the church would be built. And authority in the church was then entrusted to Peter. Whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you declare loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
The Lord could have found many different ways of establishing his church here on this earth. He could have entrusted it to the angels. He could have worked out a, a church of some sort of direct inspiration where every move on earth was exactly dictated from heaven. But instead, the Lord put the church in the hands of people of faith. Good people, like Peter, but still people with all the limitations of being a human being. And as human beings, we sometimes, sometimes the humanity of individuals got in the way of their divine charge. Peter tried to keep Christ from going to Jerusalem. We'll hear this next week, and he says, Get behind me, Satan! He called him Satan, for he was doing the work of the devil. And after boasting that he would never deny Jesus, he did. In fact, he denied him three times. And Peter was a good man. He was a man of faith. But sometimes his vision became very clouded. He was a man who could literally walk on water to Jesus, but then started thinking about what he was doing, and he starts to sink and drown. That was very much the story of his failings. He started out well, but he let his humanity affect his actions. All we need to do is look at after Pentecost, when the church was in its first days. Peter realized that, that Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians were finally, they were equal. And yet, at Antioch, he ignored the Gentiles in favor of the Jews, for which he was then berated by Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. And Peter was a holy man. But still, Peter was a man. And as a man, he made human mistakes. Now, if we look on the positive side, Apetha, the rock. Peter was a man who grew in his faith. He was a determined fisher of men. He accepted the obligations as well as all the responsibilities of leadership over the other apostles, many of whom were far better educated than he was. Think about, think about Paul. He was educated at the very feet of the great teacher Gamaliel. And yet Paul laid all his teachings out before Peter to be sure that he in fact was proclaiming Christ properly. You see, my friends, Peter's authority was given to him by Jesus and confirmed in the action of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And then through the remainder of Peter's life, the Holy Spirit worked with him. Peter may have denied Jesus before Pentecost, but after the, the promise was fulfilled of the paraclete, he embraced suffering, and that's what the gospel entails for all of us. Pick up your cross and follow me. Peter, this great man of Galilee, whose longest trip had been to Jerusalem, the city of peace, now travels all the way to the eternal city of Rome. This man who fled the crucifixion of Jesus accepted his own crucifixion, and in his humility he has to be crucified head down because he didn't deserve to die as Jesus did on the cross. When we encounter human failings of all the popes, bishops, priests, religious, and even within each other, those who follow Peter, including those who would go on to be canonized saints, we have to truly recognize the hand of the Holy Spirit in the very life of Mother Church. Christ gave his authority to the rock, and even though some of those who would exercise the society, they let their humanity get in the way of their responsibility. And still because we do have a concrete authority, rock solid, we know who we are when we, when we say we are Roman Catholic. We know the fundamental beliefs of our faith and the basic dictates of our morals. We are so firm in our faith that even if those in authority should give us a poor example of living the faith as some have, especially with the disgrace within the church, as well as some in the past, we still maintain our Christianity because Jesus promised that the gates of hell will not prevail. The church still flourishes even now in the midst of this pandemonium and the pandemic. But the devil thinks he shut us down 
but every home is a domestic church. And people will be watching virtually. Families are coming together to pray the rosary and the chaplet. There's healing taking place. Jesus is present right there in the domestic church. It's that simple. Human frailty <clears throat> gets in the way sometimes. We are the body of Christ, and we are guided by the Holy Spirit, because the church is far more than just a group of individuals. Human frailty is not more powerful than divine grace. When I think of some of the, the ways in which I, as an ordained priest, even as a seminarian or a member of my religious community, have let my humanity get in the way of my responsibility, and yet still witness the wonderful ways that the Lord uses me for others. It can be overwhelming. I realize that God's power is far greater than my own limitations. He surprises me with what he challenged me to go and to do. And after 18 years as a priest, I'm still shocked at the way the Lord uses me, despite sometimes my continual human failings. And I'm sure that there are situations in your own lives that that you might feel the same way. And I'm sure, my brothers and sisters, that, that we can recognize the Lord's presence in our decisions despite our own human failings. Many parents fear that they are acting like hypocrites when they, they do everything they can to prevent their children from engaging in actions that those parents themselves had done. But really, they are not hypocrites. They are concerned parents who want to protect their children from repeating their mistakes, and we learn from our mistakes. So we, the baptized, we the confirmed, are truly entrusted with the responsibility of leading others to Jesus. We can recognize that. We recognize that, that we do not do this alone. We can realize that we must allow the hand of the Lord to work His wonders in, with, and through each of us. At the end of Mass, that final benediction is a recommissioning to go out and to evangelize the good news. Today's Gospel reading is powerful. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. It leads us to make an act of faith in the Lord who uses human beings, you and me, to truly proclaim all his wonders. Amen. I invite you to stand with me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but substantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on God's unfailing promise, we pray for the church and the world. That church leaders and faithful believers practice charity and patience with one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who know the gift of friendship and marriage remain constant in love through every trial, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those separated by death from those they love take comfort in the promise of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community be healed of every division, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, for all those we have promised to pray for, in general and particular, those who have asked for our prayers, those who do pray for us, 
And for all the special intentions we each hold in the deepest recesses of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Father, for all our family, friends, and parishioners who are suffering physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually, for those who are fighting addictions, for those who are recovering from surgeries and those yet to undergo surgery, we beg you to send your healing hand upon Pat Lincoln, Chad Nadu, Lorraine LaFontaine, Warren Bono Sr., Bowden Van Delm, Carlene Parisian, Nada Parisian, Ken and Lori LaRock, Lucille DeRoche, James and Marlene McCoy, Connor Zach, George and Ellie Leon, Bruce Parisian, Lonnie Allery, Marlon Warren, Kirk Heldrick, Brock Kepling, Della and Bob Hurt, Mark Robinson, Becky Boyer, Lori Mano, Judy LaFerlita, Judy Rappus, Richard Plessity, Jim McLean, Alexander Trosso, Eleanor Gustafson, Tessie Laframboise, Maxine Gorno, Delcy Jerome, Conrad Parisian, Bobby Dunwoody, Bill and Becky Stats, Faye Howell, Doris Worth, Madeline Kaplan, Chet Martel, Ava Lavu, William William Spinweber, Gianna Delgado, Faith Petra, Jacob Davis, Albert and Barbara Clark, Marion Madison, Karen Lee Pizzo, Joanne Fantosi, Deacon Emery Mears, Eugene Fleetwood, Jonathan Boringer, Martha Peabody, Bill Allen, Grace Allen, Pat Malico, Phyllis and Mitch Hanna, Miles and Hilary Ellis, Rana LaRock, Crystal Hellickson, Al Mathiason. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, for those who die through the day and those who will die this coming night, especially those who die a sudden, a violent or an unprepared death, we beg you have mercy on their souls. For all our deceased family, friends, and parishioners, that they may truly rest in your peace. And we beg you, God, release every soul in purgatory, these future saints, that they may join you, the Church Triumphant, and thus intercede for us, the Church Militant, in this ongoing spiritual warfare for the battle of souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Charles Hall, be laid to rest from our parish next Friday. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we beg you to bring an end, a swift end to the pandemonium, to the evil being perpetrated against your people throughout the world, to bring a quick end to the pandemic that afflicts all of us. You are our God and Father, and we trust and believe that you can heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and to help us to persevere in our faith. Father God, you are ever living, loving, and merciful. We beg you today, on this day, the Queenship of Mary, to infuse in all of us an abundance of the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You who give life to all people and bring healing of body, mind, and soul. We beg you today, Father, to look upon us, our world, with compassion, and especially those who are threatened by disease. Grant in your fatherly providence health to the sick, strength and perseverance to those who care for them, and we beg you to bring peace and security to our country and to our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Resurrexit sit cotixit. Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mysteries of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patria Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a safe distance sign of peace. May this man in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those of us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to church and condemnation. But through your loving mercy, you for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Ece on Newsday. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep you safe. For those who are attending virtually our active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you.
Let us pass our lips as food of Lord, and may we possess in purity of heart that was given to us in time. May be our evening. within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen so that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our prayer of consecration to the two hearts. Most sacred heart of Jesus and most immaculate heart of Mary, you run in purpose as you desire the salvation, holiness, and sanctity of each soul. We, the people of the Turtle Mountain, consecrate ourselves and our families to you, seeking your victory both in our hearts and the world. May the river of the Father's divine love and mercy flow through your hearts into our hearts and through our hearts into the world. We acknowledge the perfection of your mercy, the abundance of your provision, and the supreme sovereignty of the Father's divine will. We desire to be part of your triumphant reign through our yes to a holy and divine love. We wish with the help of your grace to live out this consecration now and for eternity. Amen. Remember, our most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, brothers and sisters, pray hard, pray well, pray often, save souls, don't lose yours in the process, and tell the devil go to hell. Amen? Amen. Manitogi go shawani me, wish. May God the Creator bless you. Thank you for joining us. Let's hold each other in prayer. Let's pray for all those affected in California by the fires and this double tropical storm that could hit the Gulf Coast of Texas as well as Florida. All right. Padre Pio tells us, pray, hope, and don't worry. I'll hold each other in prayer. I love you, Mom.